What's up guys? Woo! <laughs> How are y'all doing? It has been a hot minute since I got on to my YouTube channel and posted some stuff on there. I have been so busy with work. 2020 was crazy for so many different reasons. I have been super busy with flipping. We actually did a seven day flip in 2020, uh, back in April, right before everything started shutting down and going crazy. We were up to our eyeballs in flipping houses, which is great because that's what we do and that's what we love. about to share with you a video. It's a Zoom call that I did with a very good friend of mine. His name's Tyler Jensen. He is crushing it in Utah. He's a flipper out there. He did four flips in seven days and he gave me the opportunity to go out there and be on site when he was doing those flips. I also took my project manager Adam out to those flips for over a week and we just kind of piggybacked on the whole thing and we learned a ton. Tyler is high energy, he's a visionary, he loves what he does and he, when he sets his mind to doing something, he goes and gets it done. Just recently for Christmas, he was able to go in to a garage that the single mother was living in and he raised money to do it do the whole flip for her completely free. And he was able to raise all that money and allow others to participate in that charity and in that joy of that mother for, that, for Christmas. And what a wonderful opportunity. He's always setting the bar high for us. And uh, Tyler, we appreciate and love you. When we went out there to watch the seven day flip, the four flips in seven days. Tyler uh, was very inspiring. I wanted to do this seven day flip. I wanted to try one out. And my project manager, Adam, was just kind of like, eh, I don't know, we don't, I don't know if we can really do that. I don't want to do that. Why would we do that? Actually, some of our contractors that we used were like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> Well, guess what guys? There's a lot to why we would wanna do that and I'll talk more about that in some other videos in the future. But for now, I have set a goal to start these YouTube videos back up and I wanted to just get on here and let this one be the first one. It's a video uh, of, of showing you a software program that we've been using online called Flipper Force. We are loving it and it's just a walkthrough of what it is how it works. Tyler asks a few questions. Uh, we find a few pros and cons to it. And uh, yeah, just check it out. I will put the link down below if any of y'all are looking for a software program that can organize all of your flips. It can give you the an analysis of the purchase price, what you should be paying, what you shouldn't be paying. It will give you the ability to take all of your repair estimates, uh, your purchase price, your, what your profit's gonna be on it, and send it a, in a link form to a private lender or a financial partner so that they can just, at the click of a button, go and see the pictures, they can see the address, they can see what it is, how it's gonna happen, how everything's gonna go down, the repairs and everything. Just check out this video if you like it. I've got the link down below, just click on it and it'll take you straight to it and you can see if you wanna sign up for it and see if it's something that would work well in your business. Thanks for getting back on here, guys. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for subscribing to us. Thanks for following us. Uh, we appreciate spam risk. We don't appreciate spam risks. We appreciate your support and uh, yeah, I had a friend uh, messaged me a couple days ago and he said, Dana, 
you haven't posted anything on YouTube in over a year. And I said, I know I've been a little busy. Um, it's been a great year for us business wise. I know that for as far as emotional wise and friendship wise and things like that, if, if you're somebody that, that really uh, strives in life with social aspects, you know, that was really rough this, this last year on, uh, on some of us, but you know, you gotta look for that silver lining and uh, we're in 2021 now, looking forward and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to post as much as I can on here and put as many videos as I can. Content, content, content. My friend that was asking me about, you know, why I hadn't posted in over a year, he's like, I really want, I love your content, you have good content. So I'm gonna try to keep doing it, putting it out there as much as I can and uh, sharing with you guys my experiences with flipping and what we're doing, what's coming down the pipeline this year. And uh, yeah, so happy new year. And I hope you all enjoy this video. Thanks. Perfect. So I just want to go through the plan of this video is just to really understand what you guys are using as far as the flipper force. I want to make sure that, um, that people understand what it is and that it's an option for them, right? And that they could use it in their business and how they can use it in their business, all of that kind of stuff. So. Dana, if you want to like share your screen and kind of just give me the whole overview of what it is and what you're trying to do and all of that stuff, then we can go from there. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So tell me the basics first. That's called Flipper Force. How much does it cost? All right, let's look into that too. Um, I can't remember. We're gonna have to edit this. I don't want to sound like an idiot. <laughs> 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 I should have had all the homework done for you and I didn't think about it. Okay, let's go in here. I'll share. I'll go into Flipper Force. Can you see that? Yep. All yes. right. Okay, so this is the, the dashboard when you sign into it. Here is the Flipper Force, the main page when you go to flipperforce.com. Um, they give you a free trial. I used his spreadsheets before he even developed this software. So I didn't even do the free trial. I just went right into it head first. See. There's got to be a place for prices in here so we can look. Um, what are you paying for the one that you're using, Tyler? Um, like $250 a month, something like that. Okay. All right, let's go here. Pricing, right there. Um, okay, so for the pro plan, you get all of this stuff. You get $25 a month, and you don't get the project teams, um, and you don't get access control. So what is that stuff? The project team is add multiple team members to your company workspace to collaborate on projects, which is really nice because when we have other subs and things like that, that I want to, you know, or even contractors, we're able to just send them, you know, give them access to it. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, access control, control the tools and features your team members can access in your workspace. So for example, um, what I see on mine, Adam doesn't see on his. I went with the enterprise, so I'm paying 60 bucks a month. Awesome. I get unlimited users, I get unlimited projects. I just didn't want to limit ourselves, you know, with as, as many flips as we're, we're doing. Um, you know, I didn't want to get stuck. A hundred active projects, we won't, probably won't have a hundred active. Um, I hope not. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, um, but the cool thing is, and let me go in here. This is our dashboard and you can go here and see our projects. We haven't put all of them in here yet. Um, we've been just slowly getting them, them put in. But here's one that Adam's been working on for a while, Jefferson. I'll go to that one first so you can see. But what it does is basically when you want to add a project, you go to this little button right here and you hit add. And it'll pop up, add new project project name, you can name it, whatever you want. Then you put the address in. And once you put all this in, you can make it a lead. Um, you can set, you know, what stage is it in? Negotiation, pending purchase, under contract, active listing, 
um, and wholesale inventory, rental inventory, you got all that. And then over here, strategy, is it fix and flip, buy and hold? Um, you know, you've got everything over here that if none of your um, strategies are in here, you can put other, which is really awesome because you're not limited to whatever they want you to be limited to. So once you put all the information in, this is what happens. It goes to property details and it automatically populates the map. It pulls all of this info in. It'll tell you um, that it's an apartment building, tells you the square footage, tells you how many bedrooms, baths, um, it, all this stuff is populated. I didn't have to fill out any of this stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Um, Where does it get that information? Just public? Right here. Zillow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then you can go over here, say that when you were entering your new project, when you did this, say that, um, you messed up and it wasn't a buy and hold. It was supposed to be a wholesale. You can change it here. So you're never stuck, um, in anything. This status is active. And then you just hit save project and boom, it's done. Then what you do is let's put a new one in so that you can see how the flip analyzer works, which is one of my favorite parts of this whole thing. Let's see. Yeah, the flip analyzer, I don't have on mine. Yeah, and that's one of the things. So I can give Adam control of, um, because he's the project manager, I only give him control of like the projects that are already already in there and the task management and the project scheduler which I'll show you more in a minute. So let's do this, 9318 old stage highway city Smithfield, Virginia 23430. It's a lead right now, but it's gonna be a fix and flip, create project, okay. So we're creating the project, it pulls it up and you can see how it automatically populated all that stuff. Now we're gonna go to save project and we'll go to flip analyzer over here on this bar. So once you go into the flip analyzer, it has the flip analyzer tool where you can calculate the profitability. So we'll get started, you, I'll just walk you through it so you can see it. After repair value, I haven't done the comps for this, so we're just gonna pick something. 225, sounds like a good number. I can go back and change this later when I get the real comps. Um, let's say the purchase price, I'm gonna get it for 30,000. Uh, nice. I think so. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so here's the repair costs. How would you like to calculate repair costs? Well, you can do it as a lump sum. You can go to price um, per square foot if you want to do it that way, or you can do it as detailed. So when you go to detailed, this is where you're going to create your scope and basically your, um, your repair estimator type of thing. So I don't usually go into this um, because this is what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Yes, create it. You've got selector repair estimator starter template where you've got rehab by category template, rehab by room template, new construction starter. So let's just say um, the rehab by category, it's built for estimating rehab projects that are organized by categories, such as roof, like individually. So let's do that. By job layers, right? Yeah, yeah. And this one, you know, and then you've got room by room, and then you've got new construction. So I clicked this one. And you don't use this, right? You just put in a lump sum or a square footage number? Yeah, I usually just put in the square footage. So let's, well, I do the lump sum. Let's say this place needs a hundred grand. Okay. So then it takes you to fixed costs, buying costs. How would you like to calculate your buying costs? You can do it in a lump sum, you can do it percent of purchase 
or you can do detailed. I always go to the detailed because I, I've set it up in here so that it's pretty much exactly what we pay. Um, holding costs. How would you like to calculate your holding costs? Um, I usually go detailed because I like to put the property taxes in here, um, like a hundred bucks per month. Check that. Um, and then I, I just kind of do whatever. We're going to just put a hundred in for all this stuff right now. Um, there's no HOA dues. Maintenance, I never really put that in um, because that's gonna be in my cost. Selling costs, um, you can do that by lump sum so or percentage or detail. I usually do this because I like to stick in, my girl does it for one and a half percent when she sells it. So I'm putting in the sales commission in here. So it's really only gonna be 4.5. And then we have seller assisted closing costs, um, most likely going to be three. So I just put three in there. Um, oops, it just changed. You have to make sure you hit the, the check. That's the one thing. It's a little finicky on that. So if you don't hit the check, everything that you just put in is not there. Um, home warranty, 500 bucks, title work. Now these things aren't always going to be exactly that, but that's what I'm guesstimating. So then I oh. hit... Yeah, hit next. Financing. How are you funding the project? So, you know, we use Lending Home a lot. So let's say I've got a loan with Lending Home and um, we're doing purchase only. And they do 100% of, um, of the purchase. They will do, let's see, number of monthly payments. Let's just say, I always say six. Interest rate nine with two points. Um, other costs, um, so I think we're down to eight now. Other costs, I don't think I've got any more costs. So we're gonna go to, if you have a second loan, let's say somebody you do private, uh, yeah. yeah, for repairs, you can just go there and re-enter. Um, it'll put this little tab here. So you go to the second loan. So let's Let's call it a hundred thousand, right? That was your rehab. So I would probably do, are you doing 105% or are you doing 110? Yeah. If you wanted to just do the one, you mean, instead of putting. So that's price. just your purchase, right? But now right. you've got to pay for your rehab. So you do a second one. Right. So let's just say lump sum. I need. $110,000, right? On a hundred thousand dollar rehab. Yeah. That's what I would borrow. I don't know about you, but. Oh no, yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, um, lump sum, I'm just gonna say 110 and we're gonna move and on. And then your interest rate would be. Oh yeah, eight, let's do 8%. Eight, eight. Yeah. yeah, perfect. All right, so now we've got current calculated profit. Your current calculated profit is 71,000 based upon a purchase price of 30,000. And then you can put in here, desired prof profit. How much profit do you want to make on this project? Um, $71,000, that's what I'd like to make. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so that's, right. that's, that's all I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put finish. And it gives me this flip analyzer where I can see after repair value, purchase price, calculated profit. Um, now, now that we've got this in here, um, you can go into the repair estimator and this is where my project manager, Adam, who's on here. I don't know if we properly introduced Adam here. Um, he will go into the repair estimator and he'll go into our places and do a detailed summary of, of what the estimate is for repairs. And once everything is in here, then, um, let me show you, let's go into Jefferson, for example. This is our sixplex that we're working on. You can go down to the detailed analysis reports. Okay, so this on this one, he's already done the repair estimator. Go to the detailed analysis report, go to investment packet builder. And I can share this link 
with any private lending investor, private lender, whoever, and they can look at this and I can choose what they see. Do I want them to see the cover page? If I don't, I'll take that out. Do I want them to have it? Okay, yeah, I do. Property info. This is exactly what your link that you send them, will they will get. And so they, they can see the project the, right now, they can see the financial overview, which you know they can see how much we, we paid after repair value will be 700, which it's more likely to be like 850 or 900 now. Uh, we paid eight, 185 for it, total repairs, um, 277,000. Total- That's a small rehab then, right, Adam? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's not, it's not uh, two hours away from here either. So that, yeah, you know, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's two hours away from here. It's awesome. Yeah. So total fixed cost 29, nine, this is on, um, you know, based on the estimate, the repair estimator and the financial and all that stuff, total project costs, and then it gives you the project profit. So a lender can come in here and just look at this. You don't have to worry about like typing all this up for somebody again, um, over and over and over. Um, and then it gives you the estimate summary. So if the lender wants to see where all this money is, co- you know, where it's going, you can see Adams even got it broken down by labor, material, total, um, cost per square foot, and then the percentage of the project. Um, so as you scroll down, this is... Adam, do you just use this on your phone or do you have to use it in a tablet? Uh, yeah, Dana actually got me a sweet tablet. It's, uh, it's an iPad uh, 11 Pro. So you've got to have Wi-Fi and be able to log on to this website, I assume, right? Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I can actually tweak with uh, the repair estimator a little bit if I'm offline, if I already have it opened up on the iPad. Um, but it won't update what's actually, you know, currently online for everybody else, like Dana to look at. Right. Um, until I get that that link up, it won't update it. Cool. But um, I can still kind of mess with stuff offline. But its its main function is is definitely hooked up to Wi Fi. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah. And then it's got the uh, about us page, you know, for investors to look at. You can also pull up the photos for the investors. We don't have the photos uploaded on this one, um, but we could if we wanted to. It's as simple as just clicking on it and then you open up your pictures and put them on there. Cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. The difference between this estimate summary and the detailed estimate is this. Let's look at them. Um, Estimate summary is the one that I usually send to investors because they don't need to see all the details. If they ask for it, then I'm like, okay, here you go. Detailed estimate. And so um, then when I'm ready to send to them, I just go right here, share link. It gives me a link. I copy it and I text it or email it to the investor. Awesome. Yeah, I love that feature. So then we have the project management um, section, which is you've got your task manager. Um, If you go in here, there is uh, a way to, there's a Gantt chart in here. Um, I think that's in the project scheduler, but with the tasks you can put in like Adam's to-do list. We'll go to that. so it's long. <laughs> <laughs> the whole two three. how it should be. Right? <laughs> yeah. It was short. But we have a problem. <laughs> he yes, can put notes in here as he goes through his tasks and put notes in here and put like what he did that day. He can make comments. I can make comments. Um, we can put pictures in here, attachments. That's pretty awesome. Um, and then we have like our company meeting, our company meetings, and um, hey, just just so you know, Dana, that task manager is just for Jefferson. If you go to a different project, it has its own task okay. management. Yeah. So there you go. There's a little little tip and trick. Uh, <laughs> project scheduler. 
Um, we haven't. Yeah, used that's the one. That's the one with the Gantt chart. Yeah. So we haven't used this yet, but let's say let's say it's cosmetic because we're not really. Yeah. Well, the cosmetic doesn't really give you all the stuff that we're doing in yeah. some of them. But you can see it, it's a you know typical Gantt chart, um, and you can add different things in here, and then you can change the dates, you know, and just by editing. Do you use this, Adam? Yes. Um, you, I'm you learning chart. still. Yeah, the as far as getting everything scheduled, it's just a nightmare right now. So I, I have to keep going in and changing the dates um, to keep backing things up um, just because the contractors we have out here are just, they're flaking off left and right. <laughs> they're called contractors. <laughs> so yeah, that's, um, that's the Gantt chart for this um, companies and contacts. So we can, you know, put in here, we haven't been utilizing this to the fullest. Um, no. Because we haven't really started this one particular um, completely. So, but basically what you can do is put in here the contractors that you're using, the suppliers, the painters, the title, title companies, all of your contacts can go in here. And, um, and that way you can assign this one project to, let's say there's, you know, a GC on the job that Adam is managing, he can give that GC the access to this one project. Like that, that GC doesn't have to have the access to all of our projects. So when you want to give your contractors access, what you do is you go into your users. So if you go right up here to this icon, um, you've got your profile, users, billing information, email preferences, and then your logout. So just go to the users and it pulls up who is able to use this. If you wanna add a contractor, you just put in their name. Let's say we wanna add Tyler. and tyler at crushingit.com. <laughs> so then it just added him. It's gonna send him a message saying, we're gonna give you access. Uh, and once he checks his email and accepts it, then I can give him whatever access that I want. Um, project access, software access. If I only want them to have access to some of the projects, you know, I can turn on and off which ones I want him to have access to. And then I can also give him um, limited or unlimited access to the software program as well. And you can see it's pretty, pretty awesome. So yeah, that's how that works. So they don't have to see all of our contacts. You know, and we don't, they, all they need to know is, is who they need to call for that job, you know? So that, I like that feature a lot. I'm going to go back in here to my users and remove that because I don't know where Tyler at crushing it goes. <laughs> so I'm going to remove that invite and, um, but it's as easy as that. And then here you can do your profile put your company logo in and uh, do whatever. So it's pretty, I, you know, I, I like it. It's pretty comprehensive. I'm not sure what this little thing is, zap thing. Oh, it just gives you updates like where they are with the software program. And, and then you can, you have video tutorials, uh, knowledge base, uh, submit a support, a support request. And that's another thing too. This dude is pretty quick to respond, the developer of this whole system. In fact, you can just click right here and you can go to support and type in anything you want and immediately, typically he responds immediately, even on the weekends for me. So pretty good customer support and uh, 
you can go pick what dashboards you want to go to. Uh, we have hardly anything in there right now. But it's pretty awesome. I would definitely um, look into this. Any of you who are looking for some kind of better system, like there is one guy that I've talked to that tried it and didn't like it, but he is used to using some other stuff and um, I'm not really sure like why you wouldn't like this, but you know, I'm, I'm not him. So everybody's got different businesses, different things that they're looking for. But as for us, this has worked out really, really well and um, we're loving it. So if you're looking for something, I would definitely suggest giving it a try. Let's see what's this user guides. Video case study, how to analyze a flip. So yeah, it's cool. I think it's good for the money. It's worth it, definitely worth it. Um, here's for accounting. You can do all of your accounting through this and I am not sure. I know that he was trying to get this to integrate with with QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if he has done that yet. I was talking to the um, the guy that developed this whole thing, and I think he was trying to get that to happen. Go. We're going to go to this little question mark here icon and click on it. And we're going to go to knowledge base. I want to show you all, you know, not only is their customer service really awesome, but you can go in here to their knowledge base as well. And he has created videos for t a ton of stuff. If you wanna, you have questions about the deal analy analyzer, you know, the investment packet, the project scheduler, project calendar, project budgeter, you know, let's see all their videos. He's got project budgeter overview, you know, it, it's pretty intense in here. It's pretty jam-packed full of great things. So um, I still haven't found where it actually integrates with QuickBooks. It may, I just haven't asked him. So let me see, I'm just gonna ask him on here. Let's see. Hi, Dave. Quick question. Does this integrate with QuickBooks? All right, it says don't miss out on any replies. Allow push notifications. Yes, we're going to allow that because I don't want to sit around and wait for this. <laughs> if he gets back to me soon, I'll update it. But I just wanted to show you all how you know, comprehensive this is and just how awesome. I mean, if you have questions, you get them answered. And if, if it's not in the frequently asked questions section, you go to right there and talk to him directly. But this has a project budgeter. Um, so everything that you spend goes into this expense tracker. You, this is where your expenses go. And then you can track your income tracker too, like what's gone out to people, you know, to pay them. So do you have to put this in as you go through the project? So if you buy a new fridge, right, for this project, you would have to come in here and put in the price of the fridge? Yeah. Or what if you bought $10,000 yeah. worth of stuff at Home Depot? Do you come in here and you put it in item by item or how would you do that? Yeah, I mean that would be the project manager's job. So Yeah, I have I've been remiss on this this actual portion of the flipper force. <laughs> yeah, I just think that would be really hard to do, right? Without you'd have to yeah. figure out a way to keep track of actual accounting. Yeah. Another yeah. another thing too is, you know, if you've got a bookkeeper, she's going to be putting all of this stuff in anyway. Right. So, Would she have to book it twice? Yeah, that's the thing. Like if it's not integrated yet, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to book it in this and then you'd have to do it again in your QuickBooks. Yeah. So that so would pros and cons. This that would be a con of this software, yeah. right? 
Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless, you know, you're not using QuickBooks, unless you wanted to just, cause I did ask him, I said, well, like when you flipped and you were making the software, like, what did you do? And he was like, well, I just used the software. I didn't even use QuickBooks, you know, but, um, I guess, yeah, it's, you just gotta, that's one of the cons if you do use QuickBooks. But that is potential that they could get it to integrate into QuickBooks. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. And it might be something that we want to look into. It might already be integrated because um, I don't know. I, yeah. I just, I'm in the process of switching bookkeepers and I told her about this and how it was, it was possibly going to be integrated. And she's like, oh, that's awesome. So I don't know. Um, project documents. You can just go here and see all your checklists. Um, documents for this, like store them in here, purchase, purchasing and closing documents, um, contracts. So if you wanted to put all of that in here and have it all in one place, it's kind of nice. But as you can see, we're not even like, we haven't even begun to utilize this the way that we should. You know? Yeah, I'm just scratching the surface, it seems. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I don't know if you want to like play that's, around with it. No, I think that's awesome. My, some of my questions would be like, I think the Gantt chart is cool on this. The scope of work is cool on it. Can you send out like work orders from this and send them to your subs and say, hey, sub, you're the electrician. Here's the scope of work of everything that needs to be done electrical wise. Does it have something like that capability of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I totally know what you're saying. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, that would be I think if I, I think if you set it up in the task manager properly, you could possibly send it out from the task manager. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are you, how are you looking at your actual versus budget on these? Are you actually taking the time and putting it in there or how do you know if you're on budget or not on budget? And maybe that's something that you guys will get to eventually. Um, but yeah. has it helped, like, has it helped you tell where your projects are, right? Like, are we hitting a budget? Are we going to go way over? Are we under budget? I know you've never said that. But. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I can say that one thing about this software um, that you're, you know, that goes along with what you're asking that I've really appreciated is when I put the, the information into the flip analyzer and I tell Adam, look, this is our budget. This was what we cannot, you know, go past. And he does the repair estimator. Um, I think what he's been doing, I think it helps because before we didn't really have a way to like, I would say a number, I'd be like, we can't, we have to have this number for the repairs for this property. And it was like in one ear and out the other. And so here it's kind of brought it all together where <laughs> he can go and, and check it and see if his estimate is on point. Um, now, as far and as you, like you reevaluate based on, hey, this was a forty thousand dollar rehab. Adam's estimate was forty seven. We gotta maybe think of not doing granite countertops on this one, or is yeah. that the decision that you're making from this? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but as far as you know, sticking to the repair estimator, um, you know, Adam is doing a great job. He's starting to, to learn how to work with these guys a lot better and how to negotiate a lot better. So he's doing a great job with making sure that, you know, whereas before if somebody said, okay, that's going to be a $10,000 job, he would have been like, oh yeah, that sounds pretty good. But now he can actually go back to this information and even go back to past projects and say, oh wait, we paid this per square footage on this other job. And that's not going to cut it. Like we need to get this for 6,000 instead of 10,000, you know, so it's kind of helping keep us on point better, but we're not quite there yet with as like the actual budget, like 
it, it's still it's it's a game it's just this like game that I can't ever seem to get on top of you know what I mean <laughs> we've never Adam, how Adam how accurate do you feel like you're getting at this like or do you feel like your budgets are pretty close to um, there with this program, like Dana was saying, I'm getting a lot closer to hitting the actual estimate marks. Um, cool. I feel like I'm getting a lot closer. Plus, um, as we go along, I'm getting obviously more experience on, you know, different different um, contractors, different trades coming in, and how much things cost. Like the Jefferson project that we're we're looking at right here, um, me and Dana had no idea how much historical brickwork was going to cost and they just re really needed to do some um uh, mortar repair work that was the gist of most of it um but i was getting estimates the first one was nineteen thousand, and then it went up all the way to the guy we're using who gave me an estimate of thirty-two thousand at first and like dana said i've i've actually gotten a little better with talking to these guys and uh, I talked him down to 25,000, but as such, I go in here and I change, you know, the numbers, you know, to, to reflect exactly what's being paid on, on certain things that we've already done or we're already working on or have contractors working on so that it changes the actual total estimation. So we get that full view as it's happening. Yeah, cool. you can see um, if you hit the plus button on any of these, it lays out like a, a long list of, of details. And on each job, you can actually like, you know, roofing bid allowance. If you don't want to be super detailed, you can just go in there and, and say what you want to allow for this. Um, and that will be your estimate for that. Um, up here you can do interior so this was exteriors then you've got interiors and it'll do a cost breakdown okay exteriors we're going to need this much interiors we're going to need that much um that much for mechanical electrical and plumbing oh that's right okay that makes sense since it's mechanical electrical and plumbing or right? utilities <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then any other stuff that you've got you can do over here you can put adders in um, a lot of times I'll go in and put like a um, 3%, um, you know, uh, allowance type thing on the, on the construction, just in case we go over. And then you can, you've got a summary here. You can look at what you put in and then you've got notes. So what did you say? I realized that on a job like this, the contractor will have to agree to work with our standardized pricing if they want to do the job, Tawanda. <laughs> Did you write that? No, I didn't write anything in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. What is Tawanda? Curious about that. Yeah. You've never seen fried green tomatoes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Long time ago. Some lady that crushes the car. She's like, Tawanda. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I, I think that's anything else on this, Adam. You like using it? No, I do actually like using it. And um just like uh the fact that it's it's helping me see the job with a different perspective. I'm also starting to see the numbers, like Dana was saying, and that is giving me a different perspective on all of these projects all at the same time. So cool. it's, uh, it, just, it's nice. It's definitely nice. We just closed on this. Wow. One. Let's get this in here as a, uh, where's the option uh, under construction. Yeah. I just crawled under that house this morning. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, I think that, pretty much sums it up like I just I love it I think it's I think my favorite part about it is being able to to send people potential lenders like professional links it, it makes you look like you know what you're doing a little bit better right you know and it's it's all in one place they just click on it and scroll through it and tell me if you want to do it or not awesome cool yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks, Adam.
Oh, not a problem. Really Thanks cool. for having me. Yeah. That was awesome. All right, cool. Hope you liked that, guys. Hope it was great content for y'all and that you will hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and uh, go ahead and like this video. And don't forget, I have posted some links down below for everybody to go to it, whoever wants to get on top of things and get your flips organized and run your business like it should be run. And uh, it's, a, it's a great task management system. It's a great flipping system and it's just awesome. So hope you all have a great week. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. And remember to turn on that bell so that every time I do a new one, which I will start doing a ton more this year, uh, that it'll notify you. All right. Have a good one. Bye.